So yes, I'm the founder of the Cloud Appreciation Society, and um, uh, that's something I started in 2004. Uh, and to be honest with you, it started as a joke. And it's now got 29,000 members in 91 countries. And when you become a member, you get a badge, all right, like that. And you also get a certificate. It says, you know, we, we do hereby certify your name was elected as a member of the society on the date, and will henceforth seek to persuade all who listen uh, of the wonder and beauty of clouds. All right, so there's a kind of campaigning element to this. I said I started it as a joke. Well, this was because uh, a friend of mine asked me to give a talk, like a, a, a talk about clouds, because she knew that I've always loved clouds. And I was thinking about it in the run-up to it. This is before I'd started the society, before I'd written any books about clouds or anything. I was thinking about how do I get people along? People always moan about clouds. How could I get people to come? I thought if I give it the talk an unusual name, people would be more likely to turn up. So I called it the inaugural lecture of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Just because I thought it sounded weird. Lots of people came along. They all said, you know, great, how do I join your society? And I thought, hmm. Maybe I should actually start one. Actually, this is no joke at all. Maybe we need to stand up for clouds. Maybe we need a society that reminds us that clouds are not something to moan about. They're, in fact, one of the most beautiful parts of nature, one that we can all see. You don't have to live in an area of outstanding natural beauty to be able to look up at out outstandingly beautiful skies. In a city like this, you look up, the sky is the last wilderness available to you. So, people sent in their photographs of clouds from all over the world, and we put them up on the gallery of the website, and all the photographs, I'm going to show you some clouds, I'll give you a little lesson in cloud spotting, and uh, all the photographs are ones that have been sent in by members from around the world, they're on our gallery on the website. Where better to start than the good old cumulus cloud? All right? The fair weather cloud, the puffy friendly balls of cotton wool that you see on a sunny day. They form on thermals of air rising from the sun-warmed ground. I like these clouds because they're like the sort of generic ones, really. If you close your eyes, think of a cloud, it probably look like a cumulus cloud in your head. And for that reason, they're also the clouds when you, know, you see a five-year-old's drawing. Uh, whenever you see a five-year-old drawing a picture of a lev levitating family, they're always going to put cumulus clouds in the sky above. They look like sheep, perhaps, herded along by the summer breeze. They're also good ones for finding shapes in. For instance, a cloud-spotting rabbit. They're good ones because they've got sharp edges, so that they feel kind of more solid than many of the clouds, and that, and that helps in terms of finding shapes. So of course. Seeing shapes in the clouds is one of the kind of really important, one of the great pleasures of cloud spotting. It's not just finding the different types. Now, related to the cumulus, but uh, rather different in terms of scale, is the mighty cumulonimbus cloud. This is a storm cloud. Um, can stretch many, many miles, 10, 12 miles up into the sky, spreads out at the top in this anvil shape. It's where thunder and lightning is created. Um, uh, the, uh, the heart of a cumulonimbus cloud is where um, hail is created in supercooled droplets. Sometimes when they've been around for a while, they become known as cumulonimbus capillatis, meaning hairy. Because as they get older, the more mature, the tops turn into ice crystals and spread out like hair. Um, and here you can see it kind of going out in the, the sort of anvil shape at the top. In fact, this looks a bit like a face, having a bad hair day sort of thing. You see a lot of clouds having bad hair days. Here's one that looks like... What does that look like? Dog. What type of dog? Retriever, OK, if you say so. Retriever. In fact, that's right, it is a retriever. Here, here's a bad. <laughs> Um, cumulonimbus cloud, yeah, the mighty, that's known as the king of clouds. Quite different th from that is, um, is this rather wispy fellow, the cirrus cloud, named after the Latin for a lock of hair. So the names for clouds are all Latin, as you can tell, 
but they often just mean what the cloud looks like. They, they talk about how high they are, but also what the cloud looks like. Cirrus is a Latin for a lock, like a lock of hair. And these do look like, sometimes they're, they're, they're um, brushed out by the high winds like that. Sometimes they have hooked formations, where as these ice crystals, because these are made of ice crystals, as they descend, they fall into different speeds of air, into these fall streaks they're known as. Sometimes they appear as a feather, a quill. It's usually quite kind of ethereal things that um, cirrus clouds look like. So the idea of collecting clouds is one I quite like, because it sounds like a ridiculous idea to collect clouds, all right? I mean, you can't, you can't touch a cloud, even when it's down you know, at the ground like fog. That's a cloud down at ground level, all right? You can't grasp it. There's nothing to touch. There's nothing to put inside a cabinet or a case. So what does it mean? Isn't it a ridiculous idea to talk about collecting a cloud, forming a collection of clouds? Well, I don't think so, because I think you don't need to own something to collect it. You don't need to possess it. You don't need to capture it. You just need to notice it. And you can notice a whole range of different types, such as weird exotic clouds like the Alto Cumulus Lenticularis here over the uh, South Georgia Island. All those grey seals are, of course, members of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Sometimes uh, they always form around mountainous regions. Sometimes they have this, uh, this kind of... Um, well, they usually have this smooth kind of um, almond-like um, formation. Sometimes they look rather like UFOs. Um, hovering in the lee of a mountain. So they can be weird, dramatic clouds like that you might collect. Well, they might just be common ones, like the, the good old strata cumulus, the most common cloud, certainly in this country. Um, it looks better from above like this than it does from below, but, you know, they're, um, they're one to add to your collection. Sometimes they could be fleeting, like the Peleus cloud, one that other people wouldn't notice necessarily. This is quite a dramatic one, but sometimes you just see a cap, it's from the Latin for a cap, appearing above the top of another cloud as it grows higher up into the sky. Uh, you just get this momentary cap, and then as the cloud continues to grow, the cap falls down onto the shoulder of the cloud growing below. Sometimes they look just kind of ridiculous, like mama, the Latin for udders, these pendulous, pouches of cloud can hang from the underside of the anvil. You know, I was talking about those storm clouds spreading out like an anvil at the top. And on the underside of the anvil, at the back of the storm, you can sometimes see these mama, also known as mamatus clouds. Or sometimes you might add a cloud to a collection that announces a change in the weather, like a roll cloud, like this, which can sometimes roll out. It travels along, maybe 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, tr rolls out ahead of a storm and is like an announcement of the storm before it reaches you. And sometimes clouds can be very rare, like the horseshoe vortex. <laughs> it's only momentarily there and you, again, you wouldn't necessarily notice it. It's like an upside down horseshoe. Unlucky for some, lucky for cloud spotters sort of rotate gradually in the air, and then it's gone. Or they could be rare, like the Kelvin Helmholtz wave cloud. Two minutes. The Kelvin Helmholtz wave cloud, which is a jewel for any cloud spotters collection. Here's a low one that got in the news recently in Birmingham, Alabama, because they called it the tsunami cloud. Um, so yes, the idea of a, um, of, a cloud that, uh, of, a, of a cloud collection, I think, is very, very real. The sky is always ready to answer our moods. That's what Thoreau said. Now, I think that's the case, actually. I think clouds are like moods on the face of the atmosphere. They like, they're the expressions on the face of the atmosphere, which, which kind of reveal the moods of the atmosphere to us. He also, Thoreau also said, the most beautiful thing in nature is the sun reflected from a tearful cloud. And that's true, of course. Or it could be the sun diffracted as it passes through the, the, the particles of a cloud, forming um, gentle colors, pastel colors. 
or perhaps from a high nacreous cloud as the, as the sunlight passes around the particles, or reflected from the sun drops, from the raindrops falling from the base of a cloud, uh, as a rainbow obviously is. Perhaps refracted as the sunlight passes through the crystals, the pure crystals of a high, very, very subtle layer cloud, which as the sunlight passes through can cause art, beautiful arcs of light, or perhaps just scattered by the diffuse droplets in the air, producing what are known as crepuscular rays. So, clouds that look like things, very, very important bit of cloud spotting. It's not just coming out with the names and stuff. Um, so I always love it when people send in clouds that look like things. I always encourage members of the society to send them in. Ones like, this is uh, the Michelin man going to rob a bank. Can you see that? Can you see the gun? Very important to see the gun. I haven't got a pointer on this one. Uh, or a goldfish. Gold because it's in sunlight, the, the sun is low. Um, now, I talked before about um, cloud ba bad hair days, didn't I? And how you see a lot of them once you're looking for them. Here's a face having a bad hair day. Here is a comb over on a windy day. <laughs> Topless sunbather. <laughs> a UFO cloud. Can anyone remember what I said the name of the UFO cloud was? Yeah, who said that? That's absolutely right, mate. There you go. <laughs> Iron on patch. Iron on society patch. I want to see that on your bag. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is over the, you know, uh, uh, one of these lenticularis clouds um, hovering over the Canary Islands. Um, oops, it's crashed. Salvador Dali with his moustache. Two cats dancing the salsa. What's the name of the rays of sunlight coming from behind? Who said that? Yes, indeed. Oh, you two. Bit of a power couple there. Right, seafaring cloud spotter badge. There you go. Um, two hedgehogs mowing the lawn. Maybe, maybe not. OK, might need to work on that one. Um, so finally, listen, you can't have a society without a manifesto, so I thought I'd just end with the, the manifesto of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Um, I know we're running out of time, um, and I've actually bullet-pointed them. It's very important when you do a talk, a PowerPoint talk, to do bullet points and to number your points. So that's what I've done. I got advice on this. That's what I've done. All right. Um, manifesto of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Number one, we believe that clouds are unjustly maligned and that life would be immeasurably poorer without them. Number two, we think that clouds are nature's poetry and the most egalitarian of her displays since everyone can have a fantastic view of them. Number three, we pledge to fight blue sky thinking wherever we find it. Life would be dull if we had to look up at cloudless monotony day after day. Number four, we seek to remind people that clouds are expressions of the atmosphere's moods and can be read like those of a person's countenance. Number five, we believe that clouds are for dreamers and their contemplation benefits the soul. Indeed, all who consider the shapes they see in them will save money on psychoanalysis bills. And so we say to all who listen, look up, marvel at the ephemeral beauty, and always remember to live life with your head in the clouds. Thank you very much.